Go ahead and get out your bulletins. Today, we celebrate Easter. Easter is a day we celebrate Jesus. Jesus, who was a, um, um, born in a very humble estate, born of a virgin. Jesus, who grew up in a carpenter's home. Jesus, who, who grew up, and after he'd grown and he'd hit his manhood, he began teaching he began doing some miracles, and the miracles he performed were, were amazing. They gathered crowds, and the crowds he would leverage to teach them what he knew about life and the kingdom that he was bringing. And it was his teachings that he gave and the, and the claims about him that really incited the religious world against Jesus. In fact, it was the very reason that Jesus ended up going to a cross is because his teachings riled up all of these religious leaders, and they wanted him dead. In fact, the, this is why, because the only way to, that the only two solutions they saw were either we get rid of Jesus or Jesus is going to get rid of us. And so they said, we got to get rid of Jesus. And in all of this, his teachings all of this he claimed, and this is the reason they were so mad, and, and so mad that they said the only solution we have is to kill him, is he made claims like he was God. He made claims that he was the son of God. He made claims that he was, he was the way, the truth, and the life, that no one could come to the Father except through him, meaning that no one could come to heaven, and nobody would, would be able to find life or know God except through him. He made claims that if you've seen me, you've seen God, he would walk around, hey man, I'm God in a bod. And that's the way he were operated. And that's what incited these religious leaders against him. See, Jesus claimed this, write this in your notes. Jesus claimed he was God and the only way to heaven. And when Jesus was claiming these things, he was laying claim to what Old Testament and this Old Covenant, which we call the Old Covenant, but in that day, it was the covenant, it was the, the, the revelation of God to the Hebrews, and he was laying claim to being the Messiah. Now, in our language, we interpret it as Christ because Christ is the Greek translation of this Hebrew word, Messiah. And Messiah was the son of God. Messiah was the soon and coming deliverer that would set up his kingdom and establish his reign over everyone. And this is what the Israel people were hoping for. Their eyes were on the Messiah, but they didn't think Jesus was the Messiah. The religious leaders didn't see Jesus as the Messiah because Jesus' message, his, his, his way about himself was everything. It was actually against everything that they were for even though they thought that they were for the same thing in revealing God. And Jesus, in his claim to be Messiah, he wasn't the only one in his day that claimed to be the Messiah. Did you know, a little history lesson for you, that there were four other people during Jesus' day who laid claim to being the Christ, this Messiah. And this is, and, and just for the, you, that are, if you never realize this, that Jesus Christ isn't, Christ isn't his last name. It was because Jesus was the Messiah claimed Jesus. That's Jesus Christ. But there were four other people who laid claim to that same belief while Jesus was alive. People who, who also, legends say, and, and there were writings that said they were, and they claimed to be born of a virgin that they even had special announcements like a star announcing the birth of them. And this is why when you go off to college or you send your kids off to college or you went off to college and your professor said, you know what, Jesus isn't the only one who made these claims. Jesus wasn't the only one that had been claimed to be born of a virgin. Jesus wasn't the only one who performed miracles claiming to be God. Jesus wasn't the only one who claimed to be the Messiah, and Jesus even mentions this in his scriptures. And when, when we have his, his record of scripture through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John's account of his story, Jesus said, hey, there are going to be people that are going to be false messiahs. They're going to be, ant and they're going to come out, and they're going to come, and they're going to teach you, and I want you to be cautious of them. And history has even proved that there are people who have even said that they were God, that they've laid claim as human beings also being God. We've lived our lifetime seeing some of those and reading about some of those. And you know what we think? They're a little local in the cabeza, don't we? They're a little crazy in the head. 
It's C.S. Lewis, who is, a, who is an amazing writer, and, and one of the things that he wrote about was his story of how he turned from an atheist into a Christian, a Christ follower, a Jesus person. And in his teaching, he said anyone who has laid claim to be God is either a lunatic, a liar, or really God. He was speaking of Jesus that he said either, as I was investigating Jesus as an atheist, that there are only three categories. Either he's a lunatic, he's crazy in the head, He's, he's a liar, and there's a difference between someone who's crazy in the head and they believe it, that they're saying what they're saying is true. He's either that or he just knows he's not right, and he's saying these things to gather this following, to manipulate crowds for his own power, and he's a liar. Or he really is God. And the only thing that made Jesus stand out from these four people that said they were the Messiah and other people who had claimed to be God. Did you know that there were other people in, in, a, in, a, in the world and in history who have laid claim to be God? One of the most famous ones is a man named Horus who lived centuries before Jesus. And Horus said his father was God, except he was the Egyptian God, Ra. It's just fun to say it that way, Ra. He laid claim that he was God's son. And it was history shows, and, and history said that people in legend, and that actually hasn't been proven, but said that he was crucified between two thieves. But history has shown that he's turned out to be a crazy. And there was another man who kind of turned out to be crazy. His name was Moses of Crete, and please don't judge me that I laughed when I read about Moses of Crete. Because when I read about Moses of Crete, Moses of Crete lived about 400 years after Jesus. And as he, as I read about him, he believed he was God and the son of God. And he convinced his people that he was God's son and the son of God. And he convinced his followers to go back to Egypt, back through the Red Sea. And you can imagine only what happened because nobody lived to tell the story about that. See, you're either a lunatic a liar, or you're really God. So what makes Jesus different? See, Jesus claimed another thing about himself. He said, and this is his standout statement, you can write this in. See, he said, kill me, and I'll come back to life. Now, that's my words, but that's a summary of several times throughout his walk in the disciples, throughout him talking to the religious leaders that he said, you kill me, you destroy me. And I'll be like a seed planted in the ground, and I'm going to come back to life. And it's going to be a kingdom movement. I'm going to, be, I'm going to come back to life. You can't stop me. Jesus said, you kill me, and I'll come back to life. And we don't believe Jesus because he made that statement. See, it's better than this. We don't believe Jesus came back to life because Jesus said he'd come back to life. We believe Jesus came back to life because a man, John, who was a disciple of Jesus, said, I've got to write an account about what I saw and experienced and, and walked with him. I talked with him, and after he died, I saw him alive, and here's my record of this. Another name, man named Mark wrote an account of, and he was good friends with Peter, and Peter said, I saw a risen Jesus. And Jesus appeared to many, many people. See, we believe Jesus because he was seen, write this in, by more than 500 people after his resurrection. And the amazing thing to me is this, is that these 500 people didn't die because many of them died at the hands of people who were against what they believed. And they didn't die like many people who died, like those who followed Moses of Crete back into the Red Sea. No, see, these people died not for what they be only believed in. They died for what they saw, a resurrected Jesus. See, you couldn't deny their experience that they saw a resurrected Jesus, and they died for what they saw, and what they saw formed what they believed, a Jesus who is back from the dead. And Jesus' resurrection becomes this pivotal evidence in the story of creation. Everything hinges on this evidence. 
See, Jesus' resurrection, write this in, is proof that Jesus is who he claimed to be, God. He is who he claimed to be, God. That when all these 500 people saw him, did you know that it's 500? That, that, that's, more than pe- that, that's more than how many people witnessed the Declaration of Independence being signed? And when people saw this, this became evidence that laid claim to everything that Jesus said and told John, that told Peter that Mark records, that told the disciples that Luke talks to them and he writes his account about Jesus, that told Matthew as Matthew was there as a disciple of Jesus and Matthew writes his account and all the words that Jesus says and they record what Jesus said and it validates everything that Jesus said about himself, that he was God, that it, he was God. And see, this is, this is huge because Jesus came to show us God in a way that mankind has never seen God. See, gods in the ancient world were gods of war. They were gods of judgment. They were gods that would come that had no interest in mankind. And really, if there was any interest, it was a tolerance. It was, I will just deal with you. To get you off my back, I will keep you, and, and I'll, I'll make your crops grow. I'll give you provision. I'll just, I'll just do what I can to get you off my back. And this is the way people viewed gods in this ancient world. See, gods at best tolerated mankind. And Jesus came to show us something different about mankind. And he came to show the people of Israel, these, this Hebrew nation, something that that was different because the Hebrews themselves, they believed that God loved. They believed God was a loving God, but you know what? He was a God that only loved them. He had no care about anybody else. And John, who walked with Jesus, and therefore because he walked with Jesus, he walked with God, and therefore because he knew Jesus, he knew God. He wanted you to know something about God, that he's unlike any other God and any other picture of God that maybe history has picked put in front of us of who God is. And John says this, for God so loved the world. And let me just stop there. Do you know how groundbreaking that statement was? A God where gods didn't love, they tolerated. Where gods had no care for the humanity, but God through Jesus, reveals himself to John, and John says, God so loved. And you Hebrew people, you people who who grew up thinking your worldview of God, I want you to know it's not God who just loves you. It's a God who loves the world, all mankind. That, whoever, not just a select few people, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That it's not selective. It's, it's whoever. It's inclusive. It's an invitation to anyone, whoever, that believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And because God loved, look what it says. God gave his only son. And it's interesting to me that it's his one and only son that God loved the world, that he gave his one and only son. See, John needed to include that because there, because there are many people who laid claim to be in Christ. There are many people who have come through history claiming to be the son of God. And John says, I want you to know that Jesus is the only, and if you grew up in reading the King James Version, that's why it says only begotten, which is kind of redundant because begot means only. He's the only one, the only son of God. It's important to know that. In history, Jesus is the only one And the reason we believe it is because he's alive. But John goes on. He says, for God did not send his son to the world to, to condemn the world, not to judge the world, but look at this, but to save the world through him. See, God didn't show up in a world he created to condemn it or judge it because that's what we think God does. He didn't show up in a world he created to judge you. And that might be what other people picture God as, is his judge, and he just, he doesn't care. In fact, we got to almost beg him to come and do stuff on our interests. See, God 
has shown his love for you and us that he wanted to enter this creation to be with us. So much that he came himself into this world. See, this is the teaching big idea that I want you to walk home knowing and having more hope in. That Jesus showed up to show us that God loves us. Jesus showed up to show us that God loves us. God showed up in the man of Jesus to show you that he loves you. Isn't that one of the the best ways that somebody can show you they love you? It's just to show up. I don't know if you've lost a loved one, maybe a spouse, a child, a parent, or maybe it was a good friend. And in your grief, you know what the most loving thing probably somebody did for you, and I'm projecting this on you based on my own, is someone just showed up. Someone just showed up with an arm around you, and it's not that they could fix it or solve it, but they're there with you. One of the most loving things somebody could do with you in a crisis is to show up. And Jesus shows us God's love by showing up. And he showed up to show you and I something different about the love of God, different about God, that he loves you and he wants to be with you. See, this is the story of Scripture. This is the story that's recounted time and time again, and it starts in the beginning of time, at the beginning when Adam and Eve were in the garden. And sin broke that relationship with God. God didn't throw away that relationship. See, God showed up back in the garden, back after man sinned, and he showed up with a covering. He made the first sacrifice and killed an animal to cover Adam and Eve's sin, and he made the first provision for the punishment of sin. See, time and time again, and I can't go through all of the scripture to tell you all the exciting ways that God shows up, but God shows up through Moses in a burning bush. Before that, he shows up to Abraham and makes a promise to Abraham that I'm gonna make you into a big nation, and Abraham had no kids, and the first child he has, he, God says, hey, will you give up that dream? And Abraham says yes in a weird way. He puts his child on an altar, but God shows up to be with him and provides a sacrificial lamb. He shows up to be with Moses at a burning bush to give Moses courage to lead the people out of Israel. He shows up with Israel as a fire in front of them to protect them and a fire behind them to protect them and a fire by day, I mean a cloud by day ahead of them to guide them. He shows up time and time again through scripture. He shows up in a tent and then he shows up in a temple because God wanted to be with his people. It's not a God like the gods that history says that they're just up there and they don't care. See, he loves so much that he had to show up. He shows up to be with three Hebrew boys in a in in a in a in a trial, in a furnace. He shows up and his presence alone protects them. And that wasn't just good enough for him because God wanted to show up and just at the right time in all of creation when everything was aligned, Jesus shows up in a humble manger. God shows up in bodily form on this earth as one of the creation because he wants to be with us so he can eternally be with us. And wherever Jesus walked and wherever Jesus showed up, God showed up. And what Jesus shows us about God shows us something remarkable, that God loves us. That as Jesus walked, he would show up at a wedding and his, he, he would see the need and he would show up and there would be a miracle at that. He would show up at a pool and there was a lame man. And because Jesus showed up at that pool, this lame man was healed. Jesus would show up and time and time again, he would show up and people would see the love of God and see God in a new way because wherever Jesus showed up, that's where people saw the love of God. He would show up in a temple court and there would be a, a prostitute there, a lady that deserved to die according to the law, and he showed up and intervened for her because that's what love does. Love shows up. And love showed up in a garden. On the night before he was crucified, Jesus showed up to show us God's love in a garden because he knew he was going to be betrayed and be led to a cross. 
And that night, he shows up in courtroom after courtroom after courtroom. And he shows up carrying a cross that he could only carry so far. And then somebody else shows up. He shows up on a hill. And he shows up high above the crowd. Not really so high because they really didn't lift him as high as we think they lifted him. But he showed up on a cross. Why? Because I think this is what Jesus was trying to say. It's what he said and John recorded it in John 15. He says, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. See, greater love showed up to show you that God loves you and wants to give you life. Write this in your notes. See, God proved he loves me by showing up to die for my sins. The greater love showed up by giving up his life to save our lives. And the way he saves our life is by taking on the punishment for our sins. John writes in another letter of his that is entitled 1 John because they were really creative in, when they were ty- in, uh, labeling their books and naming their books. <laughs> he says this about J- Jesus and God. This is how God showed us and showed his love among us. This is how he sent his one and only son, look at this word, into the world. See, God proved his love for you by sending Jesus to be with us. And see, he he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. in, In every one of John's writings, he shares something and there's a theme in all of it and it's life. See, love brings life. That whoever believes in God so loved the world will have everlasting life. And this is how God showed his love amongst us, that he sent his one and son, only son into the world, that we might have life through him. And then he goes on to say, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That word atoning means just like the the term, like when someone else covers your bill. When someone at the restaurant pays your bill, even though you deserve to pay it, somebody else did. See, that's what Jesus did because of our sin. Our sins disconnect us from God, and until that bill is paid, we can't be reconnected with God. And Jesus atones. He covers for our sin to show you and I that he loves us. But he couldn't show you and I he loves us unless he was willing to show up. See, Jesus showed us love, write this in, so we can live. Jesus became the one-time sacrifice to pay the final payment for our sin by taking upon himself the punishment for all mankind's sin. He showed up to show you love so that you and I could live. But this could only happen because Jesus showed up after he died. See, Jesus showed up to some disciples who didn't think Jesus was going to come back to life. They didn't believe really that Jesus was who he said he was because if they did, they would have been at the tomb that third day on that morning. They would have been there. But they didn't believe. In fact, they had gone back to their old routines and their their life before Jesus. They went back to that because they didn't believe. But Jesus chases them down and he shows up to them. And they who doubted, he shows them, and he shows himself to 500 people, and and they see him, they talk with him, they touch him, they see his body, they see the scars, they see it in his side, and they believe in a resurrected Jesus. And when Jesus goes up and he ascends to heaven, he said, I can't not be with my people, so I'm going to give a way that I can still be with my people. I'm going to send my spirit to be with them. That, that each person that believes in me, they will have a deposit of me inside of them because my spirit is going to live it with them. That's why we say when we put our trust in Jesus, he puts his spirit inside of us. He wants to be with you. See, love showed up to show you that he loves you and he wants to be with you. 
right, the sin. Jesus shows us God's love when he shows up with us by sending his spirit to live in us. Because what's the most loving thing someone can do? It's to show up. It's to show up. And God loves you so much that he wants to show up with you every day. See, Easter isn't something that we celebrate one day of the, of the year. It's not just to be that. It's to be something that we daily experience because the God who loves showed up in, on a cross, showed up after the grave so he could show up in our lives every day of the week by his spirit living inside of us. And this is what John says. John goes on to write in his first letter, he goes, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given. Now, you know what's important about that word given? is because that means you can't earn it. It's a gift. He has given this to you. He has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified. He's talking about him and his disciples and those that have seen him. He said, we've testified to this. Put your faith in what we've seen. We've seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. So how do we make Jesus our Savior? He writes, if anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, look at this, God lives in them. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is who he said he was, if you believe that and you acknowledge that, these people who are baptized today, they have acknowledged that and therefore God shows up in their life. He doesn't just show up up in heaven and watches over us. He shows up to go through life with us. God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. And so you can understand and you can lean upon this love that God has for you. Know this. It's a revelation. God is love. And whoever lives in love because love showed up lives in God and God in them. We can know and rely on the love of God. And we can rely on God being with us in this life because he loves us. However, sometimes we want God to show up the way we want him to show up. I don't know about you, but sometimes I want God to show up and almost be like those gods of that stay up there and just kind of deliver me from my pain. That God, in some way, if I behave the right way, can you, can you take care of this problem? That's the kind of God maybe you want. But that's not the kind of God that Jesus reveals to us. See, we might want God to show up in our pain and show us his love by taking away our pain. But in his love, God reveals something through Jesus that is so much more amazing. Write this in. God shows me his love by showing up to be with me in my struggle. God's love doesn't give us life that is pain-free. The living, loving God shows up in the pain of life to walk through the pain of life with us because that is what a God who loves who wants to reveal to you his love does so whatever the struggle is that you are in right now God wants to show up in your struggle and not necessarily deliver you from that struggle but walk with you in that struggle maybe you're here and you're dealing with a, 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 a habit that's destructive and in that destructive habit you, you be, God, God take, away, take it away. Just take away the desire. But what if God wants to walk with you in that and give you the self-control you need, give you everything you need that every day you can experience the life of Easter, the, a life of a resurrection, resurrected God as he shows up with you 
and daily gives you what you need in that. What if, for those of us who are grieving, in this, that, that God, you said, God, just take away the pain and really to take away the pain. It's almost an impossible thing because that'd mean to bring back the person that you've lost. But through the divorce or through the death, what if God could show up in your pain and in your struggle and, and, and as he shows up in that struggle, he walks with you and he becomes a comforter and he becomes a counselor because that's what God with us as the Holy Spirit is. See, God's love shows up, write this in, as peace in my pain. I believe Easter is a reminder that God loves us so much that Jesus showed up to show us his love and to be with us by bringing peace to us. That no matter what your struggle is, you can have an abundant, joy-filled, peace-filled life in the middle of your pain, in the middle of your struggle, because Jesus himself is with you through his spirit. That's why I believe Jesus wrote this, that John records, I have told you these things. I've given you a heads up, he's saying, so that in me you may have, look at this word, peace. In this world, he says, you will have trouble. In this world, you're going to have struggle, but I want you to take heart. What does that mean? Be courageous. Don't try to avoid it, but enter into it because I have overcome the world. That I, who am resurrection and life, that I am the way, the truth, and the life, that I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And you're going to have it more abundantly because I have come back to life. And I want to live with you and bring you life. See, God showed up on a cross. He showed up after a grave to show you and I that he loves us. And the way he shows us he loves us is by daily being with us. And all we have to do is every day accept it. Right, the sense, see, God who loves invites me to rely on his love by accepting his love. He's not a God who forces it down on you. He's a God who gently invites you. Maybe you're here today because somebody invited you and you considered yourself far from God, disconnected from him, and you have seen a God today that wants to be with you. He's a God that wants to be with you by putting himself inside of you to walk this life with you and go through the struggle and the pain with you. And today, you can accept his love by simply receiving his love. And the way you receive his love is, like we've read in the scripture, by saying, Jesus, I acknowledge that you are God's son and that you are God and everything you claimed about yourself is true because you are alive. And because you're alive, I am set free from the penalty of my sin because you became the punishment. And today I put my trust in you. And so as I put my trust in you, will you put your spirit inside of me? Thank you for loving me. And maybe today you need to make this first step toward Jesus. And it's, it's, you're making a step toward him because he's already made multiple steps to be with you. And every day you can experience Easter as a God who brings you life. And if this is your next step on the back of your Connect card or on the front of your Connect card, is an opportunity to, for you to say, my next step is to start a relationship with Jesus. I'd love for you to put a, a, a star on that to let us know that you'd love to start a relationship with Jesus. I'm gonna pray with you in a second. You can make this prayer your own. It's not the prayer that saves you. It's putting your trust in Jesus alone that saves you. And if you make that first step today, we would also love to baptize you. We got some clothes and towels ready and we would love to baptize you in the next service if you wanna publicly let others see that you're making this commitment to follow him and declare him as your savior and that you're trusting in him. But I want to pray with you. But there's also another crowd that I want to pray for. And that's those of you that have been waiting for God to show you love on your terms. And you need to allow God to show you his love on his terms. And that's by being with you. That no matter what your struggle is you're in right now, 
that a God who loves, loves you so much that he showed up on a cross to be with people and to showed up to be with you by sending his spirit to live inside of you and walk through the trouble of life with you. We're gonna have some prayer partners available if you would like prayer today. They would love to pray with you and be a hand of Jesus as they encourage you. Or you can use your Connect card and share your prayer request. We'd love to pray with you. But maybe today you need to make Easter something that's daily. Not something that we celebrate once a year, but something that you experience every day. A resurrected Jesus who brings us life no matter what we go through. Can I pray for us? Jesus, thank you. Thank you so much for making those claims and proving those claims in your resurrection. God, there are many here today that need to put their trust in you and need to make a step toward receiving your love today. And today, as they, just in their heart, may they just acknowledge that you are who you say you were and that, that you are God and that you love them. They receive the, the forgiveness that comes by you becoming the punishment for all of our sin. And God, we c- commit to follow you, to make you the Lord of our life. So come and we invite you to live inside of us. As we put our trust in you, may you put your spirit in us and give us the life that you promised that's abundant, that's overflowing, and it's everlasting. Thank you for that. And God, there are many here today that are going through a struggle. And today, the pain is real. But God, they can experience something that's just as real, and that's that the promise of Easter is in a God who shows up to walk with them in that struggle. I pray for those going through a pain and a struggle that you show up as peace in their pain because Jesus, you showed up to show us your love and you want to show us your love by being there with us. Thank you for that and in your name we pray. Amen. Our prayer partners are available. Thank you so much for being here. If there's any way we can pray with you or help you take your next step, let us know on your Connect card. God bless you, Westside, and we'll see you next Sunday as we begin our series, Express Yourself.